In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at creating one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships. As this is an advanced level course, you will probably already be aware of how to create a relationship, especially the one-to-many relationship, which is in the ECDL core qualification. So I'm going to actually use this opportunity to revise that and then move on to a one-to-one -one relationship. The reason we use relationships is to cut down or minimize the amount of data that we need to create. I've got a database here with two tables, a staff list table that shows us uh, details relevant to just the staff member. Okay, it's personal information about the staff member and each staff member has an employee number associated with them. That employee number is unique. Every employee has a totally separate employee number. To make sure that that number is unique, we usually set a primary key. If I select that field, we switch the primary key on and off using the primary key icon. The primary key effectively says that the data in that field has to be unique and it actually sets the index to yes with no duplicates so that's worth bearing in mind as well so we have a primary key set on employee number so that we that data has got to be unique without using relationships if Peter Nider went on a training course what people have done in the past is add new fields to the end of this single table to say what courses the learner had been on. Now the problem with that is that if the learner goes on or the staff member goes on more than one course then you would have to add another record at the bottom to indicate what course that learner had been on. Best practice with databases suggests that you should try to minimize the crossover of information so create separate tables with discrete information about one particular subject. So a table just about staff details and a table just about the courses. So we'll have a look at that one next. And in here you can see I've got information about the date that an employee went on a course. The benefit of this is that we can add more information to this table when an employee goes on more than one course. So we could just add in there today's date. Let's put in the 20th of November 2009 and put in employee number 101 and a new course. That information is then specific to the, to the employee on that course. What we need to be able to do though is bring that information together to be able to see quickly and easily all the courses that employee 101 has gone on. This is a very small database with only 13 records on but imagine if that was 13,000 you wouldn't just be able to scroll down the list and count oh yes employee number 101 has been on two courses so there has to be a better way to do that and we do it by using relationships. So the way we do this is to use the relationships window, which is this icon here. The relationships window is like a canvas that we can position things on. And we do that by adding tables. So I'm going to click on the show table icon and that brings up the show table dialog box with a list of all the tables available in our database. We simply select the table we want to work with and click add. Now in this instance, we've only got two tables and I need to add them both. And close the window. There are our two tables and we can move those around on the canvas and make them bigger and smaller. And if you right click on a table, you can hide it, so remove it from view, or go into the design of the table. That can be a useful shortcut. So clicking on table design takes you into the table design 
much quicker than closing things down and going back to the original table. To create a relationship is actually very, very simple. It's just a process of clicking and dragging. The difficulty is knowing what to click and drag. I want to create a one to many relationship, and that means that one staff member can go on many courses. So the staff member is the unique, and the amount of courses that they go on could be multiple. If I just click on one of the fields in the staff list, you'll see that the employee number is bold. That means that it's a primary key. So we can quickly identify the primary key. And you'll remember what a primary key is. It is a unique value. It can only ever hold one unique value. One. We don't have a primary key in the course list. So this table can hold many similar values, many courses that are the same, many employee numbers that are the same. So what we do is we click and drag the primary key field across onto the course list field and we've got to drop it exactly on the employee number field. When we do that we get the edit relationships window pop up. Now I just said you've got to drop it exactly on the employee number. That's just for ease. If you miss it, it doesn't matter because you can dial the actual fields up from here. So if you do miss it, it doesn't matter. This is creating a relationship between the staff list table and the employee number field and the course list table and the employee number field. You'll see at the bottom the relationship type is a one to many. So that's one to many. What about one to one? Well, quite simply, that means that you are creating a relationship between a primary key in one table and a primary key in the next table. So there's a direct link between two tables, both with unique values in. It's a very rare relationship. I'm actually surprised it's in this syllabus. Um, and if you want to know more about it, you can type relationships into the help system. And even Microsoft will tell you that really it's a very rare thing to do. But to create one, just make sure that both tables have a primary key. So you don't actually have to decide what kind of relationship to create. The computer does it for you. It knows that one of your fields is a primary key, one, and the other field is not. So it goes to many. We simply click the Create button and the relationship has been created. If we want to make changes to that, we can select the line by clicking on it and then right click to either delete the relationship or to edit it and go back in to this window. I'll close the relationships window now that that relationship has been created. Asked us do we want to save it? This is just about the layout. It's not about the relationship doesn't matter whether you say yes or no. Saying yes will just mean that when you open it, table, table will be exactly in the same position. So what's the benefit of that? Well, if I open up the staff list table, you can see what we've got now against each employee is a little plus sign. If I click on that, it will bring up a list of all the related the related fields in the courses table. So we can see the Peter Nider's been on two courses and shrink it down. Richard Chess Hunt is that? Yeah, Richard Chess Hunt has been on two courses, including the new one that I typed in. So we're doing a minimum amount of typing and being able to relate the tables together means we can find relevant information about each staff member.